So, but we do have this, now sort of our notation becomes kind of handy. So what looked bulky last time, maybe, because we went from where we just had t's to then having to carry around these i plus a halves, which was sort of annoying. Now the notation becomes a little bit handy because we have our explicit expression for the i plus a half in terms of any heterogeneity. And so then we can plug that right into our equation, which we derived last time. So for the ith grid block, we derive an equation that looked like this. Now we know explicitly for heterogeneous reservoir what the t i minus a halves are. And so when we put those in matrix form to solve the system of equations, let's say for our four grid block system that we've been using as a model, we get something like this. So I haven't said anything about boundary conditions yet. So this, this will be our matrix for the four grid block system. This matrix is singular, meaning you can't, if it, if it was an implicit solution, we couldn't solve this. Right? You couldn't invert that to solve it. So you have to apply the boundary conditions to be able to solve it. And this is where, in a way, at least, at least in terms of certainly of the flux boundary condition or the no flux boundary condition, um, we, this notation helps us or get, makes it sort of the easier solution. Right? So if I have the n minus 1 and the n grid blocks on the right going into the no flow condition, no flux, Then, then this Q, which would be at the n plus a half, where we evaluate the transmissibility, is equal to T n plus a half P n minus P n plus one that's equal to zero. Therefore, the transmissibility T n plus a half is equal to zero. So in our four grid block example, this T n plus a half is this T to the nine halves, so that's zero. So we just leave behind our the T to the seven halves. Uh, that's a big N, right? So 
the number of the, oh yeah, so sorry. The number of grid blocks, the total number of grid blocks is big N, capital N. The time step is lowercase. N. So this will be for a no flow, just to be clear, on the right of our reservoir. So just what would it be if there was no flow on the left? <coughs> the T one half would be zero. So the this is for no flow. What's another name, just for review, what's another name for the no flow or no flux boundary condition? Neumann. Okay. So then on the left, you have this sort of fake grid block, zero, and one. And we'll just do what we did before. We'll evaluate the flow going from the boundary to the center of the grid block over the distance delta x over 2. Okay. And we'll say that we have a constant pressure boundary condition here that's PB. So that's a constant pressure. What's another name for constant pressure? Dirichlet. condition. And so then if we evaluate the flux there, we have T one half P O minus P one. That's equal to two T one P B minus P one. So the effective transmissibility in this case is T1, 2T1 rather. And so in our example here, that would replace this. So then with that, we could solve this for Dirichlet on the left, Neumann on the right, constant pressure on the left, no flow on the right. The transmissibility matrix would look like that after the modifications, and we could solve it for an implicit parameter. 